Welcome back to the Scare Stiff Podcast. This is your host, Mike, and my co-host, Scott. How are you doing today, buddy? I have depression. <laughs> you and me both. Endless, endless depression. Do you want to list what we're talking about today? Yes, this is going to be another episode of Quick Carnage. Uh, we are discussing Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning, which is a continuation of our uh, month-long run-through of the Paramount Ain't uh, Friday the 13th films. And this one is, uh, I believe the, the term that you used before we started rolling was pussy galore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's more so because, like, if you really think about it, it's directed by a fucking hardcore porn director. Let's let's call yeah. Spade a Spade. So, like, like, he he had a, he had uh, his own uh, what he thought thought was most important for the movie, <laughs> and it, it it definitely involved naked women. So, yeah, that's that's why the joke. In like the weirdest thing about it is that the nudity does take away from the film in a way that it's not like important it is the film <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. nudity and porn it's just like hey boy that's what i came for but with this it's like you just have a woman talking about how she felt bad about letting someone down she takes her top off and it just kind of zooms and in but she's supposed to be upset and it's like hey man when a girl's depressed i don't find it very sexy and that's just kind yeah. of the tone of that and i think if you cut down on like the sex stuff it'd be a little bit better sound like a yeah. fucking loser but like it just doesn't really make sense in the movie well it's like any like I, I'm, I'm a I'm a what you would call probably a red blooded American man I guess you know I like I, I like define women. the straight. term red <laughs> okay not that red <laughs> not not that red um but uh you know I, I I'm a straight man I I like uh women so <laughs> You know, seeing nudity in movies, I mean, this is part of the genre. You didn't you know, seem too like, sure about that. You're like, it's women, right? It's women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's because I co-host a podcast with you, my friend. Hey, you know, you know, yeah. I'll give you a kiss when it's over. I'll run on over there. I'll give you the biggest smooch of your life. And you'll say women are dumb. All I'm saying is, if we was doing this on a couch, yeah. it'd be a very different podcast. A couch would get really wet really fast. <laughs> but no, like, this is part of the, the, the sub-genre of slashers. It's something that has been there since pretty much the beginning. That doesn't mean that there aren't moments you can call out for being pointless as far as nudity is concerned. Like the scene that you're you're talking about, like putting a naked woman in that scene, woman in that scene versus having her be fully clothed. There's really no reason for her to be naked. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. there for no other reason than to up the nudity count. I wouldn't even mind if she's naked. If it's like it just she lingers, it lingers low enough to where you just see her top, yeah. and it's just showing. And it doesn't work. Like, there's, a, you know, in films, there's a lot of times where they have shots where it's just above the top and you don't see nudity. Yeah. And that's just like a normal thing. You know what I mean? Like, if I see a girl take her shirt off and it, the camera's right above it, it's like, okay, yeah. you know, I know what it's supposed to be, but I'm not seeing anything and I don't really care. So when you just see that, it's a little strange and it feels off, especially when she's supposed to be upset. And it's like, yeah. How many comedies, how many rom-coms show scenes of, like, girls just having fun or whatever and they're half-naked and shit? It's like, I'm not saying you as a viewer have to like that, especially if you're a woman and you feel it's derogatory. That's fair, but, like, it's not harmful to the film. It just kind of seems like we threw it in there, have a few boobs, have a few laughs, blah, blah, blah. That's those movies to, to a T, you know? Whatever. It doesn't harm the film. But in this, when a girl's trying to be upset and she's naked, yeah. I, you know... Sorry, the last I don't thing want to I burst the bubble. When... That doesn't make me horny. <laughs> yeah, the, the last time, I, the last thing I want to see when I'm, you know, looking at a naked lady is, is, a, is an oppressed naked lady. Like that does not make it in any way, you know, uh, titillating. Like that because but, the point of the shot, like the, let's call it spade a spade. The guy, the director's probably sitting there behind the camera saying, "Man, this is perfect. This is everything I wanted in this movie." And it's just like. It, you know, it kind of it kind of derails the drama of the scene because the whole point of the scene is that she let this guy well, not let him down easy. She she she, she laughed at him. Hard. She literally she laughed, laughed at off. him and he but, went um, upstairs and he cried. Yeah, and uh, she's you know remorseful about the way that she handled that situation and that kind of a genuine emotion. It's kind of derailed 
by the fact that she's like it feels like she it, it's almost like she's just pulling her shirt off because that's the cue card for the scene literally yeah it's like hey i have to be naked for this scene i guess but, but what does it tell you about um, so like, it's kind Hollywood of distracting execs, though where it's like so i'm gonna give this monologue about how upset i am that i let him down so hard and the guy goes yeah but what about your tits they're gonna be out or i don't i don't know what they're talking about <laughs> take off your clothes and it's like dude no don't take what's my off motivation what's my motivation uh mr director you got a nice ass that's the motivation for me you know what i'm saying i cast you honest me. honestly that's what it feels like with some yeah, other direction what it feels movie. Like. and like we're joking around about it but like that shit's not cool and it, it kind of reads yeah. that way on it's screen weird. And it's fucking it, dumb it just it just kind of in in a frame in, in a, a, a subgenre where sexuality is a prominent thing yeah. It feels so unsexy that it's distracting. Yeah. So it's just like Especially it's a scene that shouldn't films. be in the movie. Like in yeah, Friday it's, it, Friday it's known for having just like nudity. kids having sex, you know. Well not kids, but like the, the, the teenagers and up. having sex or whatever and just having a fun time drinking, smoking, blah blah blah. But with this it's just this is weird. When you refer to teenagers as kids, you age like seven years. <laughs> oh, I've been noticing that all the time. I keep like, calling kid, calling every teenagers time stuff children. Like happens. Like kids. And, and it's worse because like I look like I'm fucking fourteen. Every time I cut my hair, I look like I just like de-aged ten years. And, and I'm over here like, dude, look at these fucking kids in high school. It's like they probably think I'm a grade below them. Like, what the fuck am I? I can't come over here like, haha, fucking losers. Why don't you learn how to drive a car? And they're just like. I'm literally taller than you. I'm like, short king, bro. Come on, stop. <laughs> we we came out swinging on, on on a bad thing about the movie, but we should probably discuss the actual Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, you know, sexism aside, how do you feel about the film? Oh, I, I had a really good time watching this. And, you know, the last time I saw this movie was, like, four or five years ago. Probably actually longer than that. Because uh, I watched it with you in, in your basement, because uh, you, you decided, because I, I think I told you, yeah, I think I've only seen like Friday the 13th 1, 2, and 3 because they were on Netflix. And you're like, oh no, you gotta watch, you gotta watch at least 4 and 6. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I we came out and hang out, I came over and I hang, hung out with you and stayed overnight and we watched them back to back to back. And <laughs> had a blast with 4. You fell asleep during 5. <laughs> So Hell it was just yeah, me watching. It was yeah. just, yeah, it was just me watching five. And honestly, I really didn't like it when I watched it the first time. I was just like, "This is so painful." I, I um, like the I like the head candidate though. Like, and then you, you woke you up. You knew for I six. fell asleep during five, and you're just like, "It's supposed to be a friends thing." And he kind of <laughs> let me down. Like, like it had to ruin the mood. And you're like, "That scene was really good." Oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't even ask me to snuggle. Um, yeah. We should have slept in the couch. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, but that's the last time I watched the movie. I haven't watched it since. And rewatching this for the podcast, I was actually really surprised by how much fun I had. Don't get me wrong, this movie's terrible. Yeah, it like sucks. straight up, this movie's bad. <laughs> like it's it, really bad. It it sucks, but it's fun. Yeah, I'm having a blast. Like I like, I even though the the plot itself is really stupid. Like it's just it's ridiculously dumb. But. I like most of the characters in the movie. I enjoy watching them. Especially main players. Well, the main players, but like people like Reggie the Reckless. Um, even uh, Robin, who's the girl who turns down the guy. Even I like him, too. The guy with the stutter. I can't remember his name. Gee. But uh, they, sure uh, like, I like... I like yeah. What's that? Pretty sure it's Jake. Jake? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I like him. I like. Uh, I especially like the the hillbillies. They're, They're so fucking so... funny. I remember the first time I watched this, I thought those were the most fucking annoying characters on the planet. And rewatching this, I was screaming every time they were on screen. So I was just laughing my ass off the entire pointless time. Pointless add-in characters. That well, they're not even add-in characters. Like I consider like the fucking people in six that just do the the fucking paintball. They're pointless add-in characters. I say the people at the diner are pointless add-in characters. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're pointless. They are. Characters. I mean, I had fun watching them too. It's fucking. They're when crazy. They out of their minds. Snow flurries up your nose. <laughs> He's so fucking dude. funny. He's so oh, funny. Fucking, I, I love fucking, that bald bastard, the, dude. The fucking 80s, bro. Coked up Mario. Let's go, boys. Dude, that, that's yeah, so that movie's the movie's fucking that 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 scene is fucking wild. We have a lot of history with this movie though, for like just personal, like I've hated the movie for a long time. I couldn't stand it because I hate the whole fact of it just doesn't even make matter to the universe. There's no Jason in it. It's literally Halloween three. But it's, it's not, referenced not good. again. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's Halloween three, but it actually takes place in the universe technically. Yeah. Even though it's not. But referenced it amounts again. to nothing in the universe because it doesn't really. You, the next one doesn't follow anything. They don't talk about Pinehurst. No, they they completely matter. disregard anything that happened in six, yeah. in, in five. So. So like you could say it's not canon, then who can really con- confront you on that? No one. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing because the whole thing about about the end of this movie is that they're teasing that he's gonna be hunting the killer, and then the next movie he's. He's not. He's not the killer. There's actually a novelization of the of the movie, and in the end, it says that he Five. drops the knife and in like he had like a mental breakdown about it. That's so like ending. even in the novelization, it says he wouldn't become the killer, but still. That's a better ending. It is a better ending. It doesn't make, it doesn't really <laughs> should have been in the movie. That was that's kind of the one of the things. I mean, we're jumping around a little bit, but that ending's fucking dumb. It's really stupid because it's it's just another it's just another tease like the last one. Like it's in the four. same shit as Halloween Four. Same exact yeah. shit. And it and, and and they disregard it just as. Uh, uh, actually, part five of Halloween actually kind of references what happens. It references it, it, but like a little. She bit. survives. You little. know what I mean? Like the mom survives, which is just yeah, fucking ridiculous. Die. Yeah. So it's, it, it, this one is is honestly so detached from the universe that you can honestly ignore it. We went to a con where we were just talking shit about some of our least favorite and favorite horror films, and a dude starts laughing. He goes, "Cause I said like, dude, I love all the Fridays, but fuck Part Five and fuck Jason Goes to Hell." Dude starts laughing. He goes, "Those are like my favorite ones," and I just said, "You know, good for you." Like I was just as nice as could be about it. I'm like, whatever. And after rewatching, because I have just rewatched all the films six months ago, maybe less than that. I, I was going through my memories. I rewatched uh, Friday, the original one, part uh, part one, like yesterday, a year ago. So I started that watch through like a year ago. So it was pretty neat. It's like, oh, cool. I'm doing it all over again. I'm fucking stupid. And when I got to part five, I don't even remember watching it. I was like, whatever. But getting it goes to hell. It's like, how the fuck hey, is anybody like this? Hey man, I can't talk. I I rewatch a decent chunk of, if not most, almost to the end of the entire Halloween franchise, most years. So yeah, but like I can't talk. I did it within a year. Wow. So yeah, I mean, like we are jumping back and forth here a lot, but we don't have to give our full thoughts on everything. Obviously, the nudity thing is the biggest thing about the movie. I don't I mean the understand. whole point of the movie though is that, like the MPAA gave the director a choice. All the nudity or all the kills. Yeah. And he picked the nudity. So I don't think the way the kills kind of hard not, to take away from it's the It's kind film. of hard not to talk about it cuz yeah. that's the whole point. So I mean like hey even even without like the super duper crazy gore for the kills like some of the kills are still really effective. Yeah, I I think uh, they work pretty ki- fine. The leather strap kill, awesome. Mostly because, to me, what really got me is the the, the strap snapping. Because just the amount of force that is. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, also the sound yeah. effect is really good. Yeah, the hedge clipper kill for, uh, coincidentally, two lovers. Two, two of my favorite kills. Um, and also the way that uh, the hillbilly mom dies with the cleaver through the window. That shot is just The fantastic. shot is great, yeah. Same thing with the... Um, when the waitress is in the car and sees the killer's axe hanging down with blood dripping down off of it with like the neon soaked pavement pavement. There's some actually really good compositions in this movie. I gotta yeah. give them credit. Like some of it actually looks pretty fucking good. Um, I think that one of the things we do need to talk about though. You know what? I think you're really out of line. Oh uh, yeah, chocolate boy. My god, chocolate boy, dude. I mean, he's the whole catalyst for the movie, anyways. Yeah, because you know, his dad's the, the killer. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, 
the most obvious fucking killer reveal ever. Wait, was, did they, you think that the first time watching it, though? Because I didn't realize that until this time watching it. I'm like, oh, it's super on the nose. The first, like, 20 minutes of this movie was a fucking blank slate for me the first time I watched it. But as, like, I've rewatched, like, um, the, the Crystal Lake Memories documentary and stuff, they bring that stuff back. So I, I know it now, but looking at it, <clears throat> looking at it, watching it, just how heavy-handed the foreshadowing is. Yeah. I wouldn't even call it foreshadowing. There's, it's not foreshadowing. It's, it's literally screaming at you. The paramedic's the killer. <laughs> because they're literally talking about this kid being an orphan while the camera's on him while he's getting very angry. <laughs> like, it's super obvious. It, it, it's... It's ridiculous. And and the actor himself, the guy who played Roy Burns, is sitting there on the special features being like, yeah, we thought it'd be a really nice reveal for people to find out that it was me, not Jason. It's just like, there's no reveal, man. Like, there's no reveal. It's super duper obvious. Yeah. And all these years later, I because it, it's it's a it's not like it was it was an interview done back then. It was a semi recent interview. It was probably for the 2009 Blu-ray set the tin. Um. He, like it's just like all this all this time later you still think that was a surprise <laughs> like okay I guess you know ignorance is bliss but it, it it's so obvious this is one of the big reasons why because this is supposed to be a murder mystery movie like the first one hearkening back to the idea even Roy Burns being the killer being the father of Chocolate Boy is a kind of an homage back to the first one with Pamela Voorhees but the mystery doesn't work which is which is what kind of adds to the whole so bad it's good quality to the movie because they treat it like it's this huge reveal like no one expected it coming it's just one of those moments where like they show the face of Roy Burns and you just start laughing because he's wearing some fucking goofy ass goddamn the bald like, head thing around the it bald head so yeah with, e- with ears too like it, it all it looks so ridiculous it's fucking hysterical but I mean, this this movie is the, the definition. If there's a movie in this franchise, sorry, in the Paramount Eight that I would call straight up so bad it's good, it's probably this one. Yeah, because like you said, we, eight, we enjoyed watching it. We had fun with it, but like, eight's close. <clears throat> I I would say I do enjoy it more than the original one now. It's definitely not a better movie. Hey, some some Friday Thirteenth fans are fucking having an aneurysm right now. But I could literally just fight them. <laughs> I always threaten physical violence, man. I can back it up. Or <laughs> Kings Unite. But, yeah, I, I mean... There's films that are just easier to get through in, in, like, a fun time. Like, I don't find that first Friday to be as fun or enjoyable as an experience going all the way through it. I think the final act is fun, and I like the killer. I like, uh, I like Betsy Palmer a lot. But the rest of the film, it's it's not like a slow build. It's just slow. And yeah. in this movie, everything's just a mile a minute. Some things are dumb. Some things are funny. Some things are cool. Some things are lame. But I don't have enough time to be mad because something new just happened. I'm yeah. not saying that makes it a better movie. I just think it makes it more of an enjoyable experience. I think the first one's trying out to be a better film. But at the same time, it is a ripoff film. It is just trying to be like, oh, let's copy this shit and and just hand out something as fast as possible. And it shows. This is just saying, let's make some shit and make some money. And that shows. But in a way that's easier to divulge your time into on screen. I would say probably in any measure of, I guess, objective quality, I would say that the first movie is a better movie. 100%. But I hella enjoy watching this way more. Because it's just it's much more fun, and the characters aren't irritating or dull. So there's more I like, to I, them. I mean, and I, and I like Tommy Jarvis in this too. Honestly, I'd say this is the movie where characters start to become stereotypes. In four, there's still a lot of character work in some of them, like the lovers, like the guy who gets killed in the shower and stuff. There's good character work between them and the other dynamics in the friend group. There's, Obviously, Crispin Gulliver. Yeah, there's a lot of character work. This is the movie where they're like, these aren't characters, they're stereotypes. It shows a lot besides, obviously, Tommy or, or like the main final girl. Everyone else is just like, she's the ditz. 
he's the fucking the the incel fucking guy she is the fucking badass uh, rebel girl and he's the fucking fat kid who gets made fun of and dies he's the fucking angry douchebag who gets put in prison like these are archetypes Reggie the reckless yeah you know what's actually interesting though mm-hmm. as far as I know they don't confirm that the guy who uh, killed his son dies I'm sure he doesn't you'd think that that would be one of the people he goes after first I just think they were too lazy to film at another location probably it's just you, you'd think that he would go after the person who actually killed his son yeah but it never happens so interesting six has a lot of stereotypes seven has a whole lot of stereotypes yep. eight has stereotypes I mean after this this is when they divulged from characters to just people on screen and that's why, you know, you said two is your favorite. I, I don't think no matter how far we get down the, the line of Fridays, that's going to change because two just has the best character work. Yeah, there's no fucking way. Sorry, Jason X isn't going to fucking top two. <laughs> how fucking dare you? How dare you slander his name? It does have the best kill in the series, though. For me, at least. I, I say. think it's the coolest idea. I love. The I like kill. some of the other kills because of the way that the actor sells them. Yeah, I love the crowd kill a lot, and I like the uh, in 3D when uh, even, he fucking chops the guy down the legs. Even uh, just the fucking, Mar- Mark's death. I like Mark's death too, but I feel bad the enjoying fucking, that death. The pancake of the dad is a great kill. That's pretty sick and sick. Also, yeah. the face through the fucking door. That one is up there. Six we'll just there, fucking hits, bro. We'll get there, though. Yeah. Any other final words on, on five? No, I mean, I, I really had a good time watching this. It's not, you know, it ain't Shakespeare. It's fucking dumb. It's it's ridiculously stupid, actually. But, you know, sometimes you just want to have a good time and be entertained. And I feel like this movie accomplishes that, even if it's, like, it can't hit the tenets of what I would consider to be a good film or even what I would call to be a good slasher movie mm-hmm. it's kind of just there I mean the body count in this is not low no but it, I can't it was the highest for a while I think yeah, it was it's the like, highest until either goes to hell or X came out yeah there's a lot of kills in this technically they so, count the, that's only true because they count scenes that are like not actually happening in real life like Tommy's delusions people die in they count that so I don't know if oh. you should but it's still the highest kill count for a while because of that yeah. until I think it goes to hell either way though there's still a decent body count in this movie but I can't say that like outside of a couple of the kills you know like the hedge clipper kill the you know the uh, the strap kill and the, the cleaver kill through the window you know like oh and the porta pot kill also that the- was pretty when he he hurt me more and he gets yeah that's chopped pretty off. cool that's pretty cool I kind I kind of I'm kind of walking back that statement now though because there's there's some pretty cool kills in this it, but there's a lot of kills your statement's still valid because there's a lot that I don't remember um, yeah I don't remember how the fucking dude who gets turned down dies I don't remember how he, just, the girl he gets, he gets his down. slid off screen the girl uh, actually the girl who turns him down dies like Kevin Bacon yeah. She gets a knife shoved through her, I think, if I remember, if I remember correctly, through the bed. The girl who is, like, the rebellious one. She, I know he, she kills. She gets killed in her room. Mm. But I just don't remember how. I don't remember that one. But, you know, there's a yeah, lot of deaths. Like you said, there's a lot that's going on. And I don't remember all of it, and they're not all memorable. But the ones that are memorable are very good. Are pretty good, yeah. And it does stray away from what you would see in the 80s a lot with the the huge you know gaudy special effects and you know crazy you know makeup it's it's obviously not by design it's it's because of the mpaa but it works though you know it winds up being effective enough and while it's not you know my favorite slasher movie or anything like i think it's just kind of a mess i had a really really fun time watching this especially double billing this with six because they're both very fun in this comparison. is the best double billing so far. Yeah, 100%. Easily. I would say 3 and 4 are the best combo, but I just had more fun watching 5 and 6. 
Yeah. yeah the, watching one and two back to back was really illuminating. Yes. That was. I think that that's one of the big reasons why next one week's gonna be the painful. toughest though, because they're gonna have to go seven to eight, and it's gonna be like fuck. He, I mean, I already know which one of the ones I'm gonna be like, yeah, that one's way better. But. Yeah, yeah, but my point is like, instead of going like the second one was way better, it's gonna be like, fuck, no, it's not. Every other time it was like, the first one's like. Well, the whole the whole difference is gonna be that the quick carnage is gonna be this technically the second episode. Oh, I, I know. I'm just saying like, so. we know how we watch. We're watching in order. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm so, just saying, like we picked, we picked our favorites. You know, I picked two, four. You picked six and seven. So usually, it's it's actually been sequential. But yeah, now, this is the the, the quick carnage is the, quick carnage is the the last episode technically. It has to be. Yeah. It'll be different. So it'll be it'll be fun to see how it ends on on what note. But that's pretty much it for five. We have our problems with it. We have our fun with it. We hope you check it out. Decide how you feel about it. I think is some more to evaluate. Tommy's uh, mental state is one thing to really evaluate, but besides you have to that, watch it. In the, you have to watch it in the right mindset. Mind yeah. state. you can't you can't watch this looking for a movie to be as good as even like yeah. I'm not even gonna say like like a, like a Shakespeare movie because I already made that joke. But like, you're, you not don't even look at this and say, oh, this could be at least as good as something like Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. Yeah. I, I it's don't not wanna, gonna be. It's not gonna be that good. I don't you gotta want watch it. Understanding. To turn your brain watching. off. Like it's. It's really not fair sometimes to say, "Oh, turn your brain off and watch the movie." But I will say, like, go in there with low expectations and see what happens. Because yeah. when I went in there with low expectations, I had a good time. Every other yeah. time I go in there, I usually have a higher expectation, and I'm like, "This lets me down a little bit more." But this time, it's different. Maybe you'll check and it for, out. And, you'll feel differently. Who knows? And for so long, we've been bitching and complaining about this together at work. Yeah. About five. We were not looking forward to watching years five. And years and years and years. Yeah, neither of us were looking forward to watching this. And we had fun, which is cool. Yeah. So maybe you'll feel the same way. Check it out. Tell me how you feel. We'll catch you later. Bye bye.